Hey guys, Chris with RC Worst here. Welcome back to another great video. Today we're going to be showing you how we assemble our lake intake structures for like your centrifugals or your jet pumps where you've got a pump in the lake, in a stream. Um, heck, this would probably even work in like a, a reservoir tank or a concrete tank or something along those lines. So we get this question quite a bit. So we figured we'd just throw this video together so you could see how we do it. Uh, and obviously there's a lot of options. Once we get into this, you'll see there's a lot of options for customization that you can really customize this thing to suit your needs and we'll talk a little bit about that as well. So stay tuned. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if you find something valuable out of this video. Let's dive right into it. All right, so here's what we have here. We've got our lake structure. This thing is pretty simple. We built this thing out of uh, schedule 80 PVC, of course, with the exception of our PVC schedule 40 caps. And that, of course, being because there really isn't any difference between a schedule 40 and a schedule 80 cap save you a couple pennies. Um, so anyways, we got the foot valve here on a stand pipe. The idea with this obviously is you got a lot of sediment on the bottom uh, in, a, in a lake application and you're trying to get clean, clear water and not pull a bunch of crud in. So getting this riser pipe here allows you better quality water. Another thing that you might see that we've got here, this is a piece of angle iron. What we use this for is actually a weight. So we've got the legs across here that you can see. These are for stability to keep this thing from tipping over. But the other thing is you got turbulence and so forth under the water. So we'll take this weight and we'll mount it right here. We'll use our uh, thick pump wrap tape, which is available on our website um, to wrap around here. And this tape specifically works really well because it holds up underwater for ever. I mean, I've pulled this stuff up out of wells that's been in there for a long time and it, it holds up really well, uh, no pun intended. So it's just a really good way. And then that weight kind of provides that stability so that you know, as those waves are coming in and so forth, it kind of stays put because you want this thing to stay put. And then the reason that we use the PVC material is that way you don't have to ever worry about any rust or corrosion issues with your intake. Makes it simple. Okay, so when it comes to tying this into your line, I recommend in, in nine out of 10 cases, you use either poly pipe or spiral reinforced, like PVC reinforced suction line. Uh, the, the PVC reinforced is nice if you have to pull this out every year for winterization, it's a lot more flexible. If it were a more permanent installation, stayed in year round, then the poly pipe would be great. So for us up here in North Idaho, oftentimes these lines have to be drug up out of the lake and basically drain to prevent the lines from freezing or cracking. Um, now, I know a lot of you folks don't have to deal with the North Idaho winter, and so you can leave it in year round. In that case, then um, it, it works great using the poly pipe because it's a, a inflexible, but it's like super duper tough, and that, that's what I would recommend. Uh, we'll talk just for a second about the pipe connection here. We've just got a barbed male ad or female adapter in this case. Uh, and that's because we're making that plastic to metal transition. So we want to thread the metal onto the plastic. We'll never have to worry about that pipe splitting out on us, which again, we're building this thing to last a long time. You don't want to be screwing with it, especially when it's way out in the lake and hard to access in some instances. So the next thing that we'll talk about real briefly here is you'll notice that these are all threaded connections. That's really important because Again, we're trying to design something that's gonna last for a very long time. And so these threaded connections are gonna hold up much better. You may say, well, why don't you just glue it? It's a lot easier, a lot quicker. The glue will actually slowly start to deteriorate. And it's not glue, I recognize that. It's a PVC cement, so it's meant to actually weld the two fittings together. But we find that you experience separation at about the 15 to 20 year mark with PVC that's submerged and has glued connections. So the solvent welds, and maybe it's who did the welds, don't always hold up or at least that creates a weak point. So you completely eliminate that by making this entire thing threaded. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the standpipe height and some customization. I did mention customization. So let me just swap this out really quickly and show you what I'm talking about in terms of customization. So every application is gonna have different depths of water. In, in some instances, you may not have a ton of depth, so you need to modify this so that uh, you're able to get this farther from the surface and you're not sucking air into the pump. That's a really easy way to burn up your pump if you're sucking air. You're gonna lose prime and then your pump's gonna sit there and try to run. And if you don't have a low pressure cutoff switch or some motor protection, the pump's gonna inevitably burn up doing that. So what we've got here is this is just the standard stand pipe. I think this is probably a 12 inch nipple looking at it. Uh, this is another option. And uh, one thing to keep in mind while I'm putting this together, 
is uh, minimum submergence and how to calculate your minimum submergence. The higher your flow rate, the, the more water you need above your intake screen. And the reason for that is because it, it creates uh, basically vortexes where it will if you've ever drained a bathtub, you'll notice that vortex circle in the drain. Uh, that's allowing air. It starts gurgling and, and spitting at you. Um, the same thing can happen with a pump where you're gonna pull air in, even though this may be a foot underwater, it can still pull air in and ultimately lead to the death of the pump. So this is one option. It's kind of a low profile option here. You can kind of see it can be positioned in, in multiple ways, um, but it gets you closer to the bottom in case you're dealing with those minimum submergence issues. But of course the risk with this is you are closer to the bottom and so you run a greater risk of sucking up sediment or um, silt and different things like that. So that's always something to think about as well. Now let's talk a little bit about depth of water. Now if you're setting up a new system, ideally you want your intake to be in 35, 30, 35, 40 feet of water if you can. And the reason for that is that's basically in most places the, the limit for how far light can penetrate down into the water. And that's going to, if you're below that threshold, you're gonna really, really, really reduce your risks of bugs, bacteria, living organisms, all that stuff that you don't want getting into your water in the first place. Now, if you cannot, you know, if, if you're stuck with 10 feet of water, five feet of water, whatever, one, double check your minimum submergence, and then two, probably consider some sort of a water treatment system, like a UV system. We have a lot of different UV systems on our website. If you wanna learn a little bit more, read a little bit more about them, that way you can drink that water with confidence that you're not gonna get anybody sick, which is, is always a big thing, getting a stomach bug or something at the lake cabin is a really good way to ruin a weekend. So you don't wanna have that. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Once again, don't forget to like and subscribe if you got something out of it. We hope to catch you in the next video, so stay tuned and uh, we'll catch you next time.